Wahid. My name is Wahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Sure. Uh, my name is Rachel Brooks. I usually go by Rach. Uh, that's kind of just a friend thing that has taken on. Um, I am a transformational coach and intuitive healer. And I am from a New Yorker originally, but I am currently uh, in Rhode Island, Providence. You got it. So let's let's dive into it for entrepreneur. First, yeah. I got two questions. What is your definition of an entrepreneur and what is the definition of mindset? Mm. Because these are the two big keywords that a lot of people are throwing around. And I feel like sometimes we need to put a little explanation of what they mean and the reason why they call them entrepreneur or the reason why we say you should have your mindset shift. So let's elaborate on that a little bit for us. Sure. I th when I think of entrepreneur, I guess I blend in mindset. I think of it's someone with a really original idea or it's somebody that has the motivation to keep going no matter what. So, uh, you know, I think that a lot of entrepreneurs probably have worked for people in the past and they realize this isn't working for me anymore. I feel like I can make this product better or this experience better and they want to do it in their own way. So uh, I would say original idea, whether it's a product or, um, you know, a new system of some kind and they really just have that dream that really drives them or they just have the, I guess the overall feeling of like, I can't do this for someone else. I have to do this on my own. And they just really have that drive to fail and pick themselves up and keep going because they know in their heart of hearts, it's going to work out. And then mindset for me, um, it's been a couple of different ways. I, I, I was in corporate America and I went through the mindset of like, go, 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 listen to what they say. It's almost like, it's their rules, follow them, do the best of your ability. But as I have gone through my self-development journey, um, mindset has completely taken on a new role where I am all about being selfish. So uh, I think the word selfish is a very ugly term in America where we think it's greedy, like we're taking it away, something away from someone. But my mindset now is selfish. I need to fill my cup up to make myself better for other people, to show up better for other people. So mindset is about what works for you, whether that's meditating, whether that is journaling, walking, whatever that is to get you right, get you aligned with yourself. That is mindset. I, you know, you could talk affirmations and everyone has their own, you know, different things of doing it. But I think that the way you talk to yourself in here, you have to like be in control of what's going on. So entrepreneurship, is such a, um, for those of you who are not entrepreneurs yet, new to the game, just starting, it is a constant battle with yourself because you face things like self-doubt, you face things like um, feeling unworthy, you face challenges with other people, tech things go down, you know, you kind of are a master of all hands. And until you can afford to pay people to do things or really, I love a barter system, unless you're doing like a tradesy tradesy, you need to be able to keep yourself above water. So having that positive mindset and not, you know, just like blowing all your steam and really becoming uh, exhausted, you need to stay there. Corporate America will get you to be exhausted. They'll do that for you. Like we're in a different realm over here. So I guess that's what I would say about that. Okay. So here's my question. What made you change from corporate America to being an entrepreneur? Because that leap of faith, that, that just jump right there, um, I think because of what we're going through, the, the challenges that we're going through right now, I think more people are inclined in doing so, but it's not volunteer. It's being kind of pushed. Your, your, your back is against the wall now. You sure. have to make a decision. But what made you do that change? I always like to say um, your parents told you to be whatever you wanted when you grew up, right? You have this, this promise of happiness. You get the good high school grades, you get into the good college, you did everything you were supposed to do and you're still not happy. So that I guess would kind of be the small story of a, a long career in corporate America where I felt like I was chasing the dream of titles and chasing the dream of pay, which was garbage pay anyway. But, you know, you feel like you're, they put you at a ceiling where you know you could do better and you know that self, I know I keep going back to self, but that is like what I preach to people. I knew that I was valuing more things than a title. I knew that a title wasn't going to make me um, show up differently. You know what I mean? I'm still going to do my best. And I think that the disappointment of feeling not, 
fulfilled or happy or enough after I'm talking like 15 years in an industry of corporate America that I was in that it was the promise, right? You can do this, you can move this, you can move this. And all I did was lose time, lose sleep, become exhausted, get frustrated. Um, you know, sometimes I worked well in teams, sometimes I didn't. Um, and then to be honest, in my, one of my last corporate positions, the company let go of a lot of people. And I, at one point, was in the pivot of, do I stay in corporate America? Do I not stay in corporate America? Am I going to go work for someone else? Is this even what I want to do? Like, it made me question my passion because it gets you so low in that energy of feeling defeated. And then I did, I went back into another job and I did it for about eight months and probably four months in, I was like, yeah, yeah. You, once you get that shift, you know, um, and I think right now what's going on with everyone is such, it's such perspective, right? I feel like all these accountants that dreamed of opening the restaurants are going to do it, right? All these people that are like, I've worked so much and I've traded my family life and I've worked so much, like we're spending time to gain money on things we can't even spend time in. Like how many beautiful houses are there that you're just literally sleeping and showering in to get up to go to work again? So I think it's really gonna put perspective in the dream. Like when you're a kid, you could be anything you wanna be. And I always say to people that I work with that are like, I'm seeking purpose and I don't really know what I want. I say, think about being the kid. Like when you were a kid, what could you imagine yourself being? Everybody says, I want to be happy. Well, what does happy even look like? You know, what is that thing that you're chasing? And for me, I've created ways that I know fill me up, keep me happy. And when I don't honor like my routines or um, chase like the passion and what fills me up over the money, the money will come. And that's a whole other discussion with, you know, our universal laws and things like that. But yeah, I think it was the shift of just really feeling unfulfilled, even though I was almost promised the image of fulfillment and I just did it and I did it and I did it and I wasn't getting there and I was like I'm done like following society's rules and I'm going to do it myself so I agree with that 100% I mean not all corporate jobs are like that I no mean, if no. it is then you I mean that person should get the decision or have the choice to be able to make those decisions for themselves but I feel like I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of torn apart. I mean, I think everybody should do the corporate life I to see if, if, it's, if it is for them. Sure. Go experience it. I mean, sure. think about it. How much of a better world would we have if during high school years it was mandatory that you pick five topics or five professions that you wanted to do and it was mandatory for you to go spend mm -hmm. uh, two weeks in that profession, sure. just doing voluntary work, whatever the case might be. By yeah. doing so, you would realize at least a little bit to see if that is something you want to do. Is that, is, can you wake up in the morning and be all excited about it? You know, sure. at least you get a little taste. Two weeks is nothing, you know, it's not enough. But I think a lot of individuals will change because of that two weeks. Instead of you going to school, getting a degree, and then realizing that this was not something that you wanted to do, now you're in a corporate position or you got a job that you may not be happy. And you brought up a good point. We all need to write down what that means to us because I realized this. What I call healthy, my friends call six-pack. What I call being, you know, having stamina they call lifting 250 pounds worth of bench press. Like our, our, our ideas and what I call healthy and what they call healthy, it's just like completely different. Sure. What they identify and what I identify is not matching at all. So yeah. we could have different. So we need to write down what happiness is. What, how much I think money it's do the I feeling, want? right? Everybody, you know, you're not chasing, whether it's the Mercedes you get or the Beamer or the Porsche. It's the feeling of success. It's the feeling of accomplishment. So that's when I say, what does happiness mean to you? When I first started my self-development journey, I wanted better relationships. I wanted more money and I wanted to feel better. Now, through my development, if you ask me what I want, I want a life of peace, ease, abundance, and constant joy. That is a way different chase than 
a fancy car. And that's kind of where I started. So I think that people really don't take the time or have the time to sit and say, like, what do I want? You know, as humans, we're so caught up in what I don't want, what I hate, what I don't like the boss that I don't like. Well, what boss would you like? What what what, what would that look like? Would you, you don't like the boss that constantly put you down? Well, flip your language. I would love a boss that's supporting and almost like a mentorship. So I think the same thing for you. Everybody's journey is different. Your your success version is different than your best friend's sex, success version, but we're constantly comparing ourselves to one thing, right? We're like, you know, mainstream stuff. Like you have to look like this. You have to have this type of car. You have to, it's like people now drive, have tiny houses. Me, never, not interested in a tiny house, but that's what makes people happy. That's what makes you happy. So I think it's really being able to take the time. If we are in corporate America, and let me tell you, I would never trade my journey. It turned me into the person I am today. It taught me a whole lot. So I think it's just taking that time to say, what is that definition to you? Like, what would make me happy? Is it a nap during the day as a job? You know what I mean? I always say, if you can't think of it for yourself, right? Because sometimes people are so far removed of what their identity is. And they take like moments of trauma. They're like, I I'm just not this type of person. No, that's not true. Look at someone else. So if I were to say to you, I what do I like about your your job and lifestyle? You make your own schedule. You get to spend time with family. Like, take it outside of yourself. Look at somebody else and say, okay, I like how they do that. I want to do that too. That switches a quick belief system that it's actually possible because someone else is doing it. So. That is awesome. If you had to give us one self-development tip that individuals could implement today, what oh, would yeah. that be? Uh, oh, gosh. Uh I'm a, I'm a writer, I'm a journaler, and not everybody is like that. But for me, it's almost like the writing on the page. So I would say probably start writing things down. The first thing that I started writing down was my triggers. If something bothered me, I didn't even realize how judgmental I was. And judgment, being judgmental roads all the way back to fear and things like that. But the first, this is what you can do, ready? The first time you catch yourself judging somebody else, take note of it, write it down, write it in your phone. And then if, if you're at a, I was going to say, if you're at a restaurant, nah, you're not at a restaurant. Um, if, you know, the first time you catch yourself doing that and then go home and figure out why it bothered you so much to feel a certain way about someone. That is awesome. So here's my question. What's the, <laughs> what's the difference between journaling and just having it in your mind? Uh, I call this the hamster wheel, right? You're constant, constant conversations with yourself and you're trying to solve problems. When you put things down on paper energetically, you're almost taking that stagnant energy out and putting it somewhere else. I'm a person that I sit and think at night. So if I don't put things down, like there's only so much room going on up here, put it down, put it down on paper, release it. It's like a form of energetic release that you can move past it. It's not that important. Maybe it is and you need to think about it more. I think that for me, it also, when I, it's like reading a book eight times and by the eighth time you read it, you're like, oh my God, I didn't even think of that. Read it. You know what I mean? It helps you process just like you figured out a math equation. I'm not a math person, but I, you know, I'm not figuring out math equations in my head. I'm figuring them out on paper. So that's why I love the idea of a journal and really like working through things and processing things. And that's for me, when I started realizing my judgments, like, what do I care about the girl that's wearing the outfit that looks horrific? Now my mindset is, you know what, if I catch myself, I'm like, I hope she feels like a dime today like that is the most she's feeling great that was the best outfit she had and i'm i really try to come from a place of compassion and switch it i mean we're human we're gonna judge it is what it is but that helped me start figuring out my triggers and that you know in our universal laws what you put out you get back in and then i realize my whole my whole ebb and flow of receiving and giving and it all trickles down once you start down the journey of self-development you're like I'm the kid with the chocolate in the kindergarten class and everyone else has grapes. Like, how does nobody know these things? So, <laughs> I've been asking that question for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Rachel, I want to thank you so much. Rach, I, I thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. Hopefully, we'll get to do more. Uh, love your page. A lot of thank good you. content. Keep thank up you. the good work. Thank Talk you. To you soon. Have a good you one. Bye. Bye-bye.